Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of Zeek in Action. I'm your host, Richard Baitlick, and today we'll be taking a look at another network trace. This one will also involve malicious activity as captured by Mr. Brad Duncan and posted on his malware traffic analysis uh, .net website. Uh, in the last video, we used the free Brim software from Brim Security to analyze a trace. In today's example, we're going to be a little more efficient and we're going to be using a different interface. This one will be the try.zeek.org website uh, from Justin Azoff. Today's trace will be the one that uh, is listed as Cat Bomber. Uh, it's associated with the date 2020-05-28 and there are some questions to be answered uh, which we'll probably take a shot at answering. We were already told that this uh, apparently is a trick bot infection but we're going to just be sort of looking at the trace in a more uh, holistic manner to see what we have to work with. The website or the resource we'll be using to analyze this trace is called try.zeek.org and this is a, an interface that Justin Azov coded in order to let people process uh, PCAPs using Zeek and one of the reasons I really like it is it allows you to process traces using different versions of Zeek. So I'm going to upload a trace that I've already downloaded from uh, malwaretrafficanalysis.net and we'll see what we can do with it. And when we uh, decide to do this, we choose the version of Zeek to run. Uh, I'm going to have it process using Zeek 4.0. And let's see what we get. All right. Now, if you just look at this screen as it is, you might wonder, well, it doesn't seem like a whole lot happened. But if you scroll down, you will see that the website now has entries or tabs as, as they sort of look like for the different types of logs that Zeek has produced from this trace. Uh, so just, for example, the simplest one you might want to look at is the con.log. And here are all the different con.log entries. So you can see there's a, there's a variety of traffic in this trace. Um, you've got DNS, um, TLS over 443 TCP, some other traffic that doesn't, uh, for example, this 447, that's interesting, just sort of taking a look at that. Um, now, there were some questions associated with this activity. Let's see if we might be able to take a quick look and see if we could answer any of these quickly. Um, based on the TrickBot infections, HTT post traffic. So HTT post traffic. Let's see if we could find that. Now, uh, HTT post, that would manifest in the HTTP.log. So let's see what we have there to look at. So if I click on the HTTP tab, we'll see that we have various post entries here. And clicking on one, it looks like we have, this is probably in the format of a user name and then the PC name. So Yaz33 and Catbomb W7PC. There's also a different one we see down here of Jim734 Cat Bomber DC. So this might be the uh, the domain controller. Now one of the reasons why I chose to use try.zeek.org is that when I was doing some preparation work for this trace, I realized that the uh, other versions of Zeek that were available didn't recognize all of the HTTP traffic that was in this trace. So for example, you'll notice that the post traffic for these entries uses port 80. However, this entry here and this one uses port 8082. Now these appear in the, the Zeek HTTP.log, which means that Zeek 4.0 um, was able to process them and identify them as HTTP. But let me just change this uh, Zeek version from 4.0 to 3.2 and try running the trace and let's see what we get. Okay, so we come back down here, go to HTTP, and suddenly you'll notice that we don't have any entries that are using uh, desk port 
8082 TCP. Instead, we just have uh, the entries using port 80. So when I, I talked to Justin about this, and he referenced a, um, a pull request or an issue that was closed uh, a couple of years ago, uh, having to do with the dynamic uh, protocol detection signatures for Zeek in, in an earlier version. And this was handled differently prior to Zeek 4.0. So that's why when you take a look at uh, Zeek using uh, the latest version of 4.0, you do get the activity for, let me just switch that, you do get the activity for port 8082, uh, but you don't get it on the latest ones. Uh, that just sort of is a reminder why I tend to prefer open source tools when possible when doing this sort of uh, network forensics analysis. Um, years ago when I was considering doing expert witness testimony and uh, my friend Keith Jones had done quite a bit of this work, uh, he impressed upon me that uh, he liked to use open source tools for doing uh, network friend or uh, just same type of forensics and then testifying about it because he, if, if at the end of the day he got really uh, pressed as to how a tool was operating, he could always look at the source code. And that's not something you can necessarily do with all software. So um, this sort of a, an in a built in advantage to using open source tools when you're doing uh, any type of forensic work that might get challenged. Uh, let's see what else we might be able to learn about this trace. Um, now, what is the other user account name and other Windows client? Yeah, so we found that using the post traffic. Um, questions here about what is the infected user's email password. These sorts of detail-oriented questions are probably not going to be things that we can answer with uh, the Zeek logs. Um, the reason is they tend to come about because of the transfer of information between the client, or, or the victim in this case, the targeted compromised computer, and the, uh, the intruder's computer. So to answer questions like that, we might be able to pivot off of some of this activity, but then look into the, uh, the PCAP itself. So for example, if I were to do that, open it up in Wireshark. We'll apply a HTTP filter here and uh, What I'm looking for is any type of activity where um, we have a, a nice transcript that I could rebuild. So here's an example. Um, looks like we have a process list here. Th this looks like it's all coming from the uh, one of the victim computers. In fact, this looks like it's coming from the the victim domain controller. Here you see its IP address, the username logged in. So this is information that's being transferred um, from the victim or victims to the to the intruder. Uh, let's try looking at one of the clients. So 28.8 is the domain controller, 28.29. So this is a transfer of a binary actually. This one. Here is a, a request by the client to look up its public IP address and we can see here that it's 173.166.146.112.
okay, so here's the answer to uh, one of the questions that we found. This is information that's being sent from the victim computer, uh, the Yaz33 user, and it's being uploaded to the uh, intruder. Here you can see their POP3 account, so this is a, a mail account um, for philip.gent, and this looks like their password for that account. So this is reported as being an Outlook password. So this just gives you an idea of, of some of the data that you can't answer uh, strictly using the Zeke logs because you're looking at data that was transferred in a, a command channel between the, the victim and the intruder. Now, to go back to uh, try.zeek.org and see if there might be some more information we could use, um, it might be kind of neat to see, it looks like we have a couple of Windows executables that were transferred. Um, I wish the, the PE log had the SHA 256 hash or the SHA-1 hashes, but they don't appear here. So we'd have to go into something like the files log and see. Um, so here we go. Here's a, a PE that was transferred. Here's another PE that was transferred. So those must be the ones that were transferred earlier. And if we were to take a look at the SHA-1 hash, we have that value there. And let's just look and see the other one, see if it's the same. Uh, it's actually different. So what I might do is try going to virus total, do a search. So here's the results of a virus total search on the uh, SHA hash for one of the PE files that Zeek detected being transferred. And you can see a lot of different reports here that this is some type of uh, Trojan, so this is this is bad. Um, and again, these came from the PE, but what uh, Zeek identified as Windows PEs, so portable executable formats. Might just take a quick tour of some of what else we see here. So all of this activity that's listed under SMB files and SMB mapping, uh, generally actually any of the uh, SMB type stuff, Kerberos, whatever, this is the type of thing that I like to use uh, something like uh, Bazaar, the scripts that uh, um, deal with that specifically. So if I were to go to, for example, the Zeek docs, I'll give an example of what I'm talking about. Um, When we rewrote all of the Zeek uh, log formats, um, I spent a lot of time on SMB, and I showed how you can use the uh, uh, what's called Bazaar or the Bro Zeek attack-based analytics and reporting that Mark Fernandez and his colleagues at MITRE developed. Um, Bazaar is a way to make sense of many of the different logs that are associated with NTLM or uh, Windows Server Message Block traffic. Um, just looking at raw SMB traffic can be, uh, or raw SMB logs can be kind of difficult. Um, take a quick look and see if there's any interesting notices. Invalid SSL cert. This probably has something to do with the uh, SSL server that's serving up all this uh, malicious content. Intruders don't care if their cert is invalidated. Um, take a look at the DNS requests. There's our check for that uh, that IP address. So I hope um, this was a, I wanted to take just a quicker look at this trace uh, using a different tool compared to what we used previously, which was um, uh, Brim. Now I will mention, I did look at Brim with this uh, software earlier, or I did look at Brim with this, uh, for this network trace earlier, and Brim appears to be using a version of Zeek earlier than 4.0. So it did not report the, the post records associated with 8082. Uh, now, thanks to Justin's help, I was able to actually introduce a script to modify the way Brim worked um, to take account for that, but that's a little bit beyond what my purpose for uh, this briefing was, so I did not include it. So I hope that uh, this shorter uh, briefing today um, gave you an idea of some of other some of the other ways you can take a look at network traffic using Zeek. Uh, also, some of the um, strengths and, and uh, limitations that you might encounter, some ways to uh, get around those, 
whether it's by making sure you're aware of what version of Zeek you're using, or by encountering uh, a different way to interact with the data, such as by using uh, Wireshark. You'll notice in this example, we didn't use any uh, Suricata logs. That's also something that you could use, and in fact, um, Suricata has a lot to say about this, this activity as well, but I uh, decided we would save that for another time. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this edition of Zeek in Action, and I hope you uh, will join me for the next edition. If you are interested in doing a Zeek in Action video yourself, we are very interested in having um, other people show how they use Zeek, whether it's, it's taking a look at the data, or whether it's showing how they get data into Zeek, or how they get data out of Zeek. Uh, please feel free to interact with the Zeek community and any of the, the methods we use on the website. Um, the easiest way probably is just to join the Zeek uh, Slack and talk with us there. Thank you. Bye.